Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we've got an excellent look at two climatology papers that didn't go the way the talking heads on TV wanted. We've got a diagnosis of some solar forcing as well. And of course, we're starting with the last 24 hours on our star. Bit of another calm day here. Solar wind event is dying down in geospace, leaving us with our quiet sun. The Riger cycle uptick is still expected within the next five weeks, and it should be a big one, perhaps the last major uptick of this solar maximum. For now, the sunspots are beginning to show that sign of extra juice, but not quite enough to build highly complex groups. The sunspots on the south kept spreading, to the point where the newer group growing behind them has actually become the biggest flare watch due to its rapid morphing and development into a magnetically complex group in such a short time. We'll have eyes open there. We will probably have another minor coronal hole stream enhancement to the solar wind in the coming days, likely Tuesday or Wednesday. It should be minor, as I said, but could reignite the polar auroral displays. And in terms of the filamentary eruptive activity, while it has in fact outpaced flare-driven CMEs for several days, the last day was quieter, and there only appear to be smaller filaments in Earth-facing heliographic longitudes right now. I think we can expect another quiet day overall, and we should really be enjoying those while they last. So, let's go to the science papers. Wasting no time with a big one here, the mid-Holocene cold bias is doing a lot of bad things to climatology in general. First, that bias from about 6,000 years ago makes them think modern warming is crazy. It's not. We're not even as hot as it was in the middle of the current interglacial cycle. And in terms of glacial versus interglacial cycles, we have been dancing on the precipice of the next glacial ice age for a while now. It's the pattern. Earth doesn't spend much time in warmth. Most of it is cold. And we have had a very lucky last 12,000 years it is coming to a close. And these biases do things like witness the southern hemisphere sea ice grow over the last 40 years and then they go to their models and not a single one was able to produce that. But we're told they can predict global temperatures 100 years from now. Guys, these Heinrich events often have this hemispheric asymmetry. The south grows, the north shrinks, but that shrink adds cool, fresh water to the northern seas, setting the stage for the swing back the other way. Yes, folks, our future is cold. A new glacial cycle is on our doorstep. Now, lastly, folks, since their model problems come from largely ignoring solar forcing, let's see a major development in their tracking of the number one way solar particle energy of the aurora is spread through the ionosphere to the entire globe, setting off both slow trickle-down heating effects, cutting off OLR, the outgoing heat radiation loss, and rapidly stimulating the global electric circuit. Here, they have clocked the equatorward winds as screaming fast as they exit the polar region, but slowing down as they approach their crash point near the equator, where they meet in the middle and fountain upward, the equatorial ion fountain. They have found that in the Great Mother's Day solar storm event 11 months ago, the disturbance wave was clocked at 660 meters per second at the 50th north latitude, think Canada, but it slowed to 150 meters per second by the time it was at the 37th middle of the USA. It's also like saying London versus the central Mediterranean. Their models don't work and their revelation of the sun grows by the day. If only it wasn't the end of an age and we're running out of time. We greatly appreciate your support. Lots of resources and all the background data and homework are found below the video. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here. But right now it's 545 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.